Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're continuing our Creating Miniature Army series and this time we're going to talk about the Second Scottish Wars of Independence 1332-1357 AD. We're going to talk about the Scottish and the English armies. Now the Scottish deployed in Chiltern formations, these very successful formations that uh, Robert the Bruce used uh, with great success in Bannockburn and sometimes you could find Scottish bowmen in between the Chilterns. Now, this was obviously a very successful deployment uh, that gave the Scottish many victories, but um, the Scottish did not evolve it a lot, and obviously the English with Edward III evolved a lot, their army, and we're going to see it afterwards, and the Chiltern was quite vulnerable. Now you can see on the right the pictures, uh, you can see um, the Scottish children, it's basically a Scottish uh, men at arms, Scottish yeomen with the long spears. Now, this is not, these are all claim of casting. This is not exact depiction because you, uh, I mean, I have the shields, I painted the shields, but usually um, these uh, yeomen, these sh children, uh, didn't have shields, and I will explain to you why this formation changed to make it more robust. So if we go here, here you see a nice depiction of the children. You see they were a bit less well armored, uh, with a lot of cloth and some chain mail. And obviously you see here a coat of arms of some men at arm or knights. So the children were like this, were not like here, let's go here, like my children here with the shields. They didn't have shields. Um, they were a bit less well equipped, mix them around. But most of this depiction is quite um, accurate. So what the Scottish did, because the children were very slow and they were very uh, vulnerable in uh, English longbow fire. Uh, here, let me show you here. This is a better depiction of the children. Uh, there's again Claymore castings mixed with some Essex and some uh, other miniatures. You see here on the left, you see no shields and um, their armor is uh, a bit more close to reality with some cloth barding and a little bit of chain mail here on the right as well. So this depiction of children is a bit more accurate and as they would have been. So if we go here, what the Scottish did, the Scottish, what they did, they added men at arms in the front rank. So the Scottish nobles usually never fought on their own. You don't have Scottish men at arms fighting on their own, probably until you reach uh, the 15th century where Scottish men at arms fought in the Hundred Years' War uh, with the English crown. So you have Scottish here commanders, as you can see in the front, and the children in the back, or even mixed. And what was the reason? The reason is that because the Scottish men-at-arms, the Scottish nobles, had really good armor, um, they had shields, and they created a type of shield wall to protect the less equipped yeomen or children, children behind them. So if we can go a bit in the diagram, you see here the men-at-arms were in front, and the children behind with some bowmen supporting on the flanks. So, how you can create an army for the Scottish? Now, you have Scottish children, 60-70%. Most of the army was children. Now, Scottish nobles and men at arms with the children. So, uh, I would say mix them. As you can see here, you can create bases depending on the base size. And you will have, I would say, 50% or 40%, actually no more than 40, 30% of Scottish men at arms in the front. As you can see here, Athol and uh, the Earl of March. And the other bases will probably be with less equipped uh, men at arms with long spears and um, uh, would be basically the yeomen that uh, uh, compile and make the children. Now you have Scottish archers on the flanks. Yes, you have some Scottish bowmen. Scottish bowmen were very good. And um, um, on the contrary, they were actually quite equal to the English bowmen. But obviously the Scottish didn't have this uh, production of bowmen, didn't have this, the numbers and obviously didn't have the laws that uh, England had and young men were um, every Sunday were uh, training uh, with the bows. Now you can have Highlanders and Islemen, you can have a small portion of them also. Um, they usually came to support, although sometimes they were not involved, but Highlanders and Islemen you can have as lesser men at arms. And obviously you can bring Irish Kearns in as a light infantry. Now it can help you a bit. Uh, I have some major commanders of the period, 
and you can see the video I have above here on the tag where I have uh, Scottish and English commanders. I have more of them. So if you want names and you want coat of arms, you can check this video as well. So here in the Scottish, you have uh, Scragmoor, you have Ross, very famous. You have the Earl of March here on the right. You have Moray and the Seaward of Tiberius. These are the coat of arms on the shields. You have Stuart of Houston, you have Athol, very famous, uh, Crichton, uh, Crichton, and uh, Walter Wart, Wart, Wart Fitzpatrick, Fitzgilbert, excuse me. More Scottish, you have Galloway, obviously you, you can use David II of Scotland. You have Stuart, who became the King of Scotland later. Douglas, obviously, the Tyneman, uh, the Earl of Carrick, Fraser, a very famous Scottish noble, Carmichael and Blair. You have to know something. The Scottish nobles and the Scottish general uh, commanders, the Scottish men-at-arms, were very well equipped. Um, I need to really explain to many people who don't understand. Maybe they didn't have the top quality um, armor that the top nobles in England may have had. But most of them were quite rich. They had a lot of land in Scotland that some of them have in England as well. So the Scottish nobles and the Scottish commanders were very well equipped. They were basically totally uh, looking like English knights. So this depiction of Scottish nobles look like, uh, you know, uh, peasants or uh, with rags and other things. It's, it's not historically accurate. They were very well equipped. They were nobles. So let's go to the English. Um, how the English deployed? The English deployed after the dis disaster of Edward II in the battles against Robert the Bruce, and obviously, as you can see here, Henry the Third, uh, Edward the uh, Third, changed how the English fought. The English evolved, and they dismounted in the Battle of Halidon Hill. It was the first time that the English dismounted, probably 1333, the Second Scottish Wars of Independence, where the Scottish were annihilated. So what you would you probably have, you have longbowmen in the flanks and men at arms as this was similar to the, what Henry did, Edward did in the Hundred Years' War. Uh, and also at times you had the, the formation of the English stagger that you see here, longbowmen, men at arms, longbowmen, men at arms. Uh, always there were mounted reserves at the back, or no mounted reserves, but the, the army would have been mounted and many English men at arms after the Scottish were routing, would go back, uh, mount their horses, and start chasing uh, their opponents. Now, as you can see here on the right photographs, these are my English nobles. Uh, these are northern nobles. We're going to express, we're going to discuss how it worked, who they could be. And um, as you can see, obviously, they would have longer men over the period were mostly cloth, some helmets, uh, very lightly armored. So, uh, these are uh, all northern Scottish nobles, as you can see. We're going to talk about them in, uh, a bit later. Now, let's see now the, some photographs of the, of the English nobles. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of heavy infantry uh, mixed with them. Why? Most of the commanders were local northern English nobles, you know, not that rich as the southern counterparts. So, for more realistic looking bases, uh, I would suggest you have some well equipped knights, like 30 40% on a base. And the remaining miniatures to be heavy infantry. These are again Claymore castings. You can see, you can see here, for example, Percy, and uh, you see on the left here. I have in the, in the picture down in the long picture, the elongated picture. You have, you see here a lot of um, of uh, heavy infantry. Also here uh, in the top, you see the captains and the commanders who were rich nobles, obviously, uh, and um, around them, surrounding them, I have heavy infantry. So try and not have bases only with with, with very well-equipped knights. Uh, it was not the case, especially in the north. Let us not forget almost that most of the major battles of the Second Scottish Wars uh, took place while the king uh, and all the high-ranking nobles were in France. Uh, so most of the elite forces were in the continent. So yes, for example, the Battle of Naples Cross, um, the king was uh, campaigning in France with all the major nobles uh, fighting Naval's Cross was around crazy, and uh, you had also the, the Poitiers campaign. So, uh, if you exclude the Halidon Hill campaign, that it was uh, King Edward III personally, and you had really major nobles from all over England, you had Oxford, you had you had Wolf, 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 Wolverhampton, you had uh, excuse me, you had Northampton, you had really major nobles. Um, the other battles, the defences, for example, in battles of Neville's Cross. The English nobles who defended were mostly northern nobles. So 
you have to adjust accordingly thinking that these were you know armies that had a little less uh, high nobility and a lot of more common folk to make it more realistic if you're going to go into so much detail so um, what I would put the English you see here again on the picture on the right you see I have the uh, men at arms a lot of men at arms and heavy infantry not high-ranking nobles and a couple of high-ranking nobles in the front so I can make it more realistic they're wearing the, the colors of the commander if you want to make it as retinue as you can see here I don't remember which retinue is here on the right so the English I would suggest obviously 50 to 60 percent longbowman men at arms 30 percent and you can have heavy cavalry 10 15 percent as reserve or or you can mount your existing mana time so you can put the mana times 40 percent and the long run 60 percent so you can play around but more than half long woman uh, the same as in um, in the hundred years war so let's see some english commanders we have uh, here on the left william de la Zucke. he is not from the north he's the he was the archbishop of canterbury at a point he came to support you have ralph, ralph neville one very famous commander from the north baron Henry de Beaumont. Uh, Sir John Putsey, uh, Henry Percy, obviously the Percy's, and Sir John Widrington. Some of the commanders you can use for your campaigns. So this is for me, guys. I hope I gave you a good overview of the um, Scottish Second Scottish Wars of Independence, um, and uh, I hope you understood how, in my opinion, how you should do your basing so you can mix them a bit and you can make them more realistic. And obviously obviously it depends on what campaign you will fight if you fight a campaign that obviously the kings are uh, present uh, you have more men at arms and more nobles if you have other campaigns where you have only local lords fighting obviously the retinue is more heavy infantry uh, less equipped men at arms uh, fewer high-ranking nobles and um, there's quite a significant difference in the armies uh, of the of the of France of the English in France and of the English in the north, in my opinion, and uh, also obviously the Scottish uh, fought with all the major nobles because this was their main war. Um, afterwards, uh, most of the major Scottish nobles uh, moved to France and uh, uh, fought there. Anyway, guys, uh, this is from me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions, please write them down in the comments below section and I will answer. Thank you for watching and bye bye.